The title of today's study is New Organization versus the Foundation of Adventists. New Organization versus Foundation of Adventists. Revelation chapter 2 verse 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou suffered the woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and to subdue my servant to commit fornication, to eat things sacrificed unto idols. So now we know the revelation says, I have a few things against you, because you allow who? Jezebel. And the Jezebel in the last days represent Papacy. Notice another quotation. Notice Revelation chapter 2 verse 14. But I have a few things against thee because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balaam to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. Before we talk about the foundation of Adventists, we're going to go through quotations from Spirit of Prophecy and the Bible, or Bible and the Spirit of Prophecy, we're going to find out whether the Conference Church is the new organization according to the Word of God, or those we stand, we stand on the foundation of Adventists. Because, I mean, it seems like it's like a three groups. Because there are some people that they think they are Seventh-day Adventists. They don't belong to conference. But unfortunate. They're not on the original faith that Ellen G. White says. And that's another group. Our chart, our pioneer chart. We're going to find out the new organization. We're going to find out the one that is going to heaven and the one that is now going to heaven. So let's find out. Because we don't want to be deceived. We live in the last days. This is coming from Selective Messages, Volume 1. Page 204. This is famous quotation. Notice what Ellen G. Y. says. The enemy of soul has sought to bring in superstition that a great reformation was to take place among seven day Adventists, and that this reformation will consist in giving up the doctrine we stand as the pillars of our faith and engaging in a process of reorganization. What this reformation to take place, what will be the result? The principle of truth that God in his wisdom has given to the remnant church will be discarded. Our religion will be changed. The fundamental principle that have sustained the work for the last 50 years will be accounted as error. A new organization will be established. Notice, books of new order will be written. A system of intellectual philosophy will be introduced. The founders of this system will go into the cities and to do a wonderful work. The Sabbath, of course, will be lightly regarded as also the God who created it. Nothing will be allowed to stand in the way of new movement. The leaders, notice, the leaders would teach that virtue is better than vice, but God being removed, they will place their dependence of human power, which without God is worthless. Their foundation will be built on the sand, and storm and tempest will sweep away their structure. So now we know the new organization, the conference churches. And when we talk about conference churches, a lot of people don't understand. They think, well, we try to attack human beings or anything like that. No. Ellen G. White says our conference churches, they're going to go to apostasy. Or they're going to, I mean, they're going to take their feet from their own belief. Ellen G. White says in Selective Message, by in 1 page 204, Ellen G. White says new books will be written. They're going to write, they're going to write a lot of books that is not our faith. It's offshoot. All of them is coming from Rome, Jezebel, or Balaam, so to speak. Instead of them, they come to the foundation of Adventists, just like the Bible and the Spirit of Prophecy says. A lot of them don't want to come to the foundation. They want milk message. Lukewarm, sleeping preachers are preaching to sleeping people. That's what Ellen G. Y. says. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 1 to 2. Notice what the Bible says. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. 
Therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flowers and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, says the Lord. That's what Jeremiah said. There's a lot of pastors that they pretend like they're feeding Seventh-day Adventist people, the conference churches, or Rome in the last days, Babylon, the king of the north. Here, I mean, anytime when they go to any churches, take a leadership, and they will take holy things, and they will destroy. They will turn all the holy things, the service of God, or things that belongs to God's service, or for holy use, they will destroy it. So, uh, this is coming from Testimonies for the Church, volume 5, page 217, paragraph 2. Notice, the church has turned back from following Christ. A leader and is steady retreating toward Egypt. Yet few are alarmed or astonished at their want of spiritual power. Doubt and even disbelief of the testimony of the Spirit of God is leaven our churches everywhere. Satan would have it us. Ministers who preach self instead of Christ would have it us. Their testimony are unread and unappreciated. God has spoken to you. Light has been shining from his word and from the testimonies. And both has been slighted and disregarded. The result is apparent in the lack of purity and devotion and, devotion and earnest faith among us. When the testimony is unread, when the God's people come to the last days and they refuse to read the spirit of prophecy. The Bible says in the Proverbs, where there's no vision, the people perish. That's what a lot of seven-day Adventists, they perish because they are new organization, unfortunate. They don't even preach that three inches message anymore. And they don't know anything about Habakkuk two tables. They don't know what constitutes seven-day Adventists. They don't understand for you to call yourself seven-day Adventist and, and not understand your own belief, that's so sad. Because they follow blind leaders. I mean, the word of God says, if a blind leads blind, they both will fall into a dish. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 2 to 10. Son of man, prophecy against the shepherd of Israel. Prophecy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God unto the shepherds. Woe be unto the shepherd of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherd feed the flocks? Ye eat the fat, and you clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. The disease have ye not strengthened. Neither have ye healed that which was sick. Neither have ye bound up that which was broken. Neither have ye brought again that which was driven away. Neither have ye sought them which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have you ruled them. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they become meal to all the bees of the field which they were scattered. My shepherd wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth. And not this search or seek after them. Therefore, ye shepherd, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, says the Lord of God. Surely, because my flock became a prey, and my flock became me to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherd search for the flock. By the shepherd feed himself and feed not the flock. Therefore, O oh, ye shepherd, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flocks at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherd feed themselves anymore, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. God is not going to allow the sleeping preacher that Ellen G. Y. said, sleeping preachers are preaching to sleeping peoples. God is not going to allow the synagogue of Satan to feed his flock anymore. There has come to the time that the foundation is it's built up, so to speak, for God's people in the last days because the mark of the beast is at hand. Sunday law is everywhere right now. 
they now enforce. Some places, some countries, they already accept or they already enforce Sunday law. But we know according to uh, Bible and the spirit of prophecy, United States are the one that they're going to enforce Sunday law. And if they enforce Sunday law, it's going to be like democracy. It's going to spread the whole world. Around the world, this foundation is, is going to everywhere. Praise the Lord. This is the fulfillment. That's what Ellen G. White says is going to happen. Early writings, page 123 to 124. This is also is coming from Ellen G. White. Notice what Ellen G. White says. I saw that many of these shepherds had denied the past teaching of God. They have denied and rejected the glorious truth which they once zealously advocated and have covered themselves with mesmerism and all kinds of delusion. I saw that they were drunken with error and were leading on the flag to death. Many of these opposers of God's truth devised mischief in their heads upon their beds. And in the day they carry out their wicked devices to pull down the truth and to get something new to interest the people and divert their mind from the precious or important truth. Both Bible and the Spirit of Prophecy declare that they are false shepherds. They don't want to walk in the old path. They off shoe. They have taken their feet from their own shoe which means they have taken their feet from their own belief. They don't believe in the foundation of Adventists anymore. Praise the Lord. Now the foundation is going everywhere, just like Ellen G. White said. So God's people has been fed. Those who come to the foundation of Adventists by the grace of God, they are fed. Amen. 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 Isaiah 28, verse 14 to 15. And again, Isaiah 28, verse 14 to 15. Notice what the scripture says. Wherefore hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scorn shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lives our refuge. And on the falsehood have we Hide ourselves. Isn't that what this false shepherd is doing? Unfortunately, now, before you graduate from our own school, Seventh-day Adventist school, the conference, church and the conference schools, because, because the Romans has taken leadership right now, and unfortunately, because they have taken a leadership, all the doctrine that is coming, even is spiritualism. I mean, it's so sad that the spiritualism is living now in the Seventh-day Adventist. The new organization. Now those we on the foundation of Adventists. If you really want to stay out from all the false teachings that the Rome is doing this last day, the best thing for you to do is to come to the foundation of Adventists. Otherwise you're going to be lost. A lot of people, they don't want to come because they, they love false shepherd so much. The time has come that everybody has to eat the word of God for himself. Because you're going to stand for yourself. When the test comes like a Sunday law, Ellen G. White says sometimes you can stand like there's no any other. There's nobody that is living this earth. You're going to be alone. Just like Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Elijah. All of them. So you got to eat the word of God for yourself because nobody's going to come to the court and defend you. Because Romans are so cruel. And when I talk about Romans, I'm not talking about some of the members that are deceived in the Roman church. When I talk about Romans, I'm talking about the papacy, the leaders that knows that they're doing the evil work, that they're deceiving the people and taking the people to hell. These are the people that I'm talking about. Those who know the truth, but they choose to feed themselves. They will study the word of God for themselves and not to live by the word of God. And not to spread the truth to save, to help others to go to heaven. That's what the Rome is doing right now, them Jesuits. That's why now they in our conference churches and the conference schools. Everywhere you go, false doctrine. A lot of people don't even know this chart. This is the old chart, the pioneer chart. We're going to read the inspiration. You're going to find out it's the pioneer faith. But many people, they don't believe in our faith no more. Because the Bible said in the last days, each in the years, they want smooth things. 
prophesy unto us smooth things. Doctrines that will make us sleep to death and get the mark of the beast Sunday law that is coming. First, notice what the Bible says, Isaiah chapter 28, verse 18. The story continues. Notice. Remember, we just read from Isaiah 28, verse 14 to 15. Now we're going to the same chapter, Isaiah 28. But right now, we're going to read from verse 18. Notice. And your covenant with dead shall be disnewed, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scorn shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. Amen. All this boasting and proud that all the time, those people, those leaders that are false messengers or that are in our conferences, that are pushing Rome, the Vatican Roman teachings that are destroying the foundation of Adventists. They don't want our people to know our belief. Sometimes you know, they, they will boast and they will say, hey, all the bad things that is coming is not going to fall on us. Be safe. They're deceiving themselves. Jesus Christ said, don't deceive yourself. When the Sunday law comes, I mean, you're going to get the Sunday law, the mark of the beast. Because you can't stand. You can't stand alone unless you have the Spirit of God. The conference church, they use Freemason New World Order. They use the sixth frame. You're going to see that it has a three frame on this side. It goes like, you know, like a triangle this way. This is what it is. It's like this. Triangle, they have the you know, Bible underneath, try to deceive people. But this is how it goes, and I'm gonna put it on the screen. It's it's a Roman frame, and that's why they have a six frame, not the seven, because Rome worship number six. Even the cross is upside down, and I'm gonna put all of them on the screen for you. They're not using our pioneers chart, and they don't use the three inches logo because they don't want to preach the three inches message. LNG White says in Testimonies for the Church volume now, we are watchmen in these last days. We are the only church that is worn in the whole world. LNG White told us to spread the three inches message and now allow anything on this world to observe our attention. And now they know that if, we, if our people preach a three inches message, they're going to come to the foundation, they're going to know the logo, and they're going to know the sixth frame, the Vatican papacy. Roman logo. Everything that we have, they try to remove. That's a new organization. David, the logo itself will tell you that it's a new organization. The one who created that logo is Roman Jesuit. They try to claim that the logo, the upside down cross that is, is underneath, they're going to overcome Seventh day Adventists. They're going to overcome new organization. They don't have our belief anymore because they are off shoe. But praise the Lord. Now those who are on the foundation of Adventists, can you fight against Jesus Christ, the one who led his people, the made not cry, that is living the loud cry, the third in just mess, 144,000 in these last days. So now we're going to talk about the foundation of Adventists. Now we're going to find out the true foundation. The faith which was once and for all was delivered to the saint that the Bible says. Let me give you a little key to understand the Bible so that the devil don't deceive you and make you think that the Bible was written for Jewish or some people and now for you. Notice. Notice what Ellen G. Y. says. Selective message volume 3 page 338. Each of the ancient prophets spoke less for their own time than for ours, so that their prophecy is in force for us. Now all this thing happened unto them for an examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11. Not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost, sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 12. Notice this is coming from Isaiah 62 verse 6 to 7. I have set a watchman upon thy wall. O Jerusalem, we shall never hold their peace day or night. 
ye that make mention of the Lord keep no silence and give him no rest till he establish and till he make Jerusalem praise in the earth. Amen. So God's watchmen in the last days. Those we on this foundation, those we building the foundation of many generations, that Isaiah chapter 58 verse 12 says, we're not going to keep silence until God has made Jerusalem praise in the earth. Who is Jerusalem? Spiritual Jewish. Spiritual Israelite. Amen. Amen. God is going to use us to feed his people no matter what. You can attack this message. Whenever you see this foundation, this is not a scattering. This is a gathering. According to Isaiah chapter 11, God is gathering his people right now. Many people are coming out from the false doctrine that is blowing, the foolish wind of doctrine that is blowing Adventism. And now, conference churches, new organization. This is coming from... Manuscript releases, volume 21, page 437. Notice what Ellen G. White says. All oh, the message given from 1840 and 1844 are to be made forcible now. For there are many people who have lost their bearings. The message ought to go to all the churches. Amen. Amen. Ellen G. White is talking about. The foundation, the message that was given 1840 to 1844. And in G.Y. says, our message has to go to all the Seventh-day Adventist churches in this gathering time or these last days. Testimonies for the Church, volume 6, page 87, paragraph 4. I want you to catch this. Notice. It has been shown me that our camp meetings are to increase in interest and success as we approach nearer the end. I have seen that in this meeting there will be less preaching and more Bible study. There will be little group all over the ground with their Bible in their hands and different ones leading out in a free conversation study of scriptures. Amen? Amen. Amazing. Isn't that what is going on now? Amazing, my brother. My brothers and sisters, this child is going around the world. It's like a tidal wave. It's like a wildfire. 1 BIO page 180 paragraph 3. Notice what Ellen G. White says. Those who claim to be advantaged, to be constant, acknowledge the means that God in his mercy has employed to bring them to the light of the advent truth and which has made them what they are. No one would deny the fact that it was the proclamation of the time, 1843, as it was written on the chart that arose the Adventist people to look for the Lord. Amen. Ellen G. White is talking about this chart. Even Ellen G. White says our pioneers, every seven day Adventist, everybody's supposed to constantly look or search to know the foundation. Our pioneers believe, but a lot of people don't understand. A lot of people don't even know this chart right here. 1843, 1843 chart. Many people don't know 1843 that Ellen G. White says in 1BIO page 180 paragraph 3 and even 1850 chart that was published by Brother Nichols. A lot of people don't know. There is a lot of Seventh-day Adventists that they also say they don't belong to the conference churches but unfortunately they fight against the foundation of Adventists, our pioneer true and the pioneer chart. Notice what Ellen G. White said and some of them they try to hold 1863 and notice this is coming from Manuscript releases, volume 5, page 203, paragraph 1. Notice what Ellen G. White says about these charts, special 1850. All of them Ellen G. White talks about it. Manuscript releases, volume 5, page 203, paragraph 1. On our return to Brother Nicholas, the Lord gave me a vision and showed me that the truth must be made plain upon tables, and it will cause many to decide for the truth by the third angel's message, will the two former be made plain upon tables? I also saw it was necessary for the paper to be published as for the messengers to go. For the messengers need a paper to carry with them containing present truth 
to put in the hands of those who heard, and then the truth will not fade from the mind, and that the paper will go where the messengers could not go. Other thing I saw, which will appear in the paper, Ellen G.Y. says, laymen will finish the work. Amen? The first English message began 1840, and the second English message, 1842, when the Protestants began to close their doors, Sunday churches. When they came to the United States, their forefathers. So the first and second English message is on this chart, 1843 chart or 1843, and then the third English message is on 1850 chart. That's why you see the sanctuary. That's why you see 1844 right here. If you claim that you are Seventh-day Adventist, you better come to the original faith that Ellen G. White talks about it and the Bible talks about it. Whenever you get time, read Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. Ellen G. White talks about this chart right here. She referred to Habakkuk 2 tables in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. Manuscript releases, volume 13, page 351, paragraph 1. I saw that God was in the publishment of the child by Brother Nickers. Right here, put the camera right here, my brother. Notice. By all this nickel of brother nickel. Right here. I'm going to read it one more time. And then you are coming on this. Are you going to fight against? Are you going to fight against your own truth? The pioneers, the old path, the foundation of Adventists? If you don't have a foundation, you don't have a burden. I didn't finish. Notice. Manuscript releases by 13, page 351, paragraph 1. I'm going to start it one more time. I saw that God was in the publishment of the chart by Brother Nichols, talking about 1850. Notice she continued. I saw that there was prophecy of this chart in the Bible, talking about Habakkuk, two tables. Let's continue. And if this chart is designed for God's people, if it is sufficient for one, it is for another. And if one needs a new chart, Pain on the large scale, all needed just as much. And a lot of people, and we say, well, no, we don't believe in this chart that God endorsed. They want to believe that chart that one of our pioneers make mistake. Ellen G. White warned his husband, James White, 1850, and unfortunately, 13 years later, 1863, he published 1863 chart without even explanation because God never told him to do that. God never commanded him. He did it on his own. We believe in James White. Amen? Amen. All his writing, excellent. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But just like William Miller, we believe in William Miller. Amen? But William Miller make mistake too. Amen. Just like James White, he make mistake. But the Bible or spirit of prophecy cannot be mistaken or cannot make mistake. So it's true, but a human being can make mistake because Bible or spirit of prophecy is the word of God. Can Jesus Christ make mistake? The champion of truth? Oh, you better believe him. So now let's read Isaiah chapter, Isaiah 62 verse 10 to 12. Go through, go through the gates. Prepare ye the way of the people. Cast up, cast up the highway. Gather out the stone. Lift up the standard for the people. Behold, the Lord has proclaimed unto the end of the world. Say you to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And thou shalt be called, sought out, a city now forsaken. God is telling the watchmen in these last days to go through, go through the gate. You have to enter every seven day Adventist churches, especially the conference churches, and proclaim the foundation of Adventists. Don't be lazy, watchman. The word of God said the watchman will never keep silence until God has made Jerusalem seven day Adventist spiritual Jewish praise on the earth. Ezekiel 34, verse 22, 30. And again, Ezekiel 34, verse 22 to 30. Therefore will I save my flock, and they shall be no more be a prey. And I will judge between cattle and cattle, and I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them. 
even my servant David. Amen. He shall feed them and he shall be their shepherd. And I the Lord will be their God. And my servant David prince among them. I the Lord have spoken it. And I will make it with them a covenant with peace. And I will cause the evil bees to cease out of the land. And they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. And I will make them and the places round about my herb a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. Talking about the latter rain. Continue. Notice. There shall be a shower of blessing. And the tree of the field shall yield her fruit. And the earth shall yield her increase. And they shall be saved in their land. And shall know that I am the Lord. When I have broken the bands of their yoke. And deliver them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them. And they shall no more be a prey to the hidden. Neither shall the bees of the land devour them. But they shall dwell safely and none shall make them afraid. And I will raise up for them a plant of renown. And they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land. Neither bear the shame of the hidden anymore. Thou shall they know that I the Lord their God. I am with them and that they even the house of Israel are my people says the Lord God. And ye my flock, the flock of my pasture, amen. I am your God, says the Lord. So God already helped us to understand in this chapter, Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 22 to 30, God is going to feed his people. Jesus Christ is not going to come from heaven. He always have his representative, amen. Amen. And he's going to use his people. He's going to use us by the grace of God. Praise the Lord for this great opportunity. He's going to use us to feed his people. Praise the Lord because this child is going around the world right now. Notice this is coming from Zechariah chapter 8 verse 2 to 3. We're talking about the foundation of Adventists. The gathering. The pure, holy, remnant, seven day Adventist church. That is going to heaven. Amen. Zechariah chapter 8 verse 2 to 3. Notice, that says the Lord of hosts. I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy. And I was jealous for her with great fear. That says the Lord. I am returned unto Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth. And the mountain of the Lord of hosts. But the city of true, my brother. This is the true. The city of true. So if you call yourself a seven-day Adventist, you better come to the foundation of Adventist. Jeremiah 6, 16 says you have to come to the foundation of Adventist. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 to 4. Notice what Jesus says. For Zion's sake, will I not hold my peace? And for Jerusalem's sake, will I not rest until thy righteousness go forth? as brightness and thy salvation thereof as a lamb that burneth and the gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all the kings of glory and thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the lord shall name thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the lord and the royal diadem in the hand of god thou shalt no more be tempt forsaken Neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. But thou shalt be called Hephzibar and thy land Beulah. For the Lord delight in thee and thy land shall be married. One thing that hurts me the most is some of our seven day Adventists that they believe that they're not on conference churches. But unfortunately, they've been deceived by papacy too. They've been deceived by Balaam and Jezebel papacy in these last days. Because they see that some of the papacy, they're fighting against this chart. And they are surface readers. That an EGY says, surface readers anchor nowhere. They can't dig deep the Bible and search the truth. they lazy Laodicea. Just like their name says, Laodicea. Lukewarm. They're lazy people. Ellen G. White says, the Seventh-day Adventists in this last day, we're going to search the word of God just like William Miller searched. Our pioneer, the founder, that God used him to establish this truth, William Miller. 
So if we're going to search the word of God just like he searched, we'll talk about 2520. But there's a lot of people that they fight against seven times. If Ellen G. White says this child is from God, why 677 is here? Are you going to fight against the chart that God order or command? If you come to even the bottom of the chart, 1850, you're going to find out the explanation of, of the time. And then seven times, that is above here. Look right here. Seven times, 677 BC. It's right here, the explanation. Put the camera right here. Seven times is seven times 360 equal 25, 20 years. It's right here. Does God ever tell uh, James White to publish 1860 chart that a lot of people like, love to follow or like to follow human being? And now the scripture that says the Lord, when you see this chart, oh, you better love it and come to this chart. This is the chart that a lot of rain is sprinkling. When I heard that Jeremiah Matheson talk against this chart, it hurt me so bad. Why? Because I love Jeremiah Matheson. I remember when I was in New Jersey. I passed out a lot of National Sunday Law. I love Brother Marcus. But Ellen G. White says in early writings that those who fight against this chart, some of them will, be, will see the glory about this chart. I'm paraphrasing. And they're going to step back to the foundation of Adventists talking about this true foundation, this true Habakkuk 2 tables. That's the event page. 209 and also 2010, if I'm not mistaken. Ellen G. White said some people that they're going to see some, something that they're going to fight against because they are blindness. When they see the ladder rain is sprinkled, the mighty angel that Ellen G. White says in Revere and Herald, 1906, then when the tall building of New York came down that day, Ellen G. White said, Revelation 18, verse 1 to 3 will be fulfilled. And then Ellen G. White says in last day event. Ellen G. White says, if I'm not mistaken, just like I says, page 209 and 210. Ellen G. White says, some people, they're going to see some light. They, they, they are blindness. They're going to they're gonna rise up to resist because they think it's dangerous. Why they say, should we not know the word of God? Should we not know the Holy Spirit? When we have been in the world for so many years, that's what Ellen G. White says. And it hurts me the most. A friend of mine, I never talked to him, but I used to order his, I mean, his National Sunday Law books. And I used to go to Philadelphia and pass them out. I love him, Brother Marcusin. But I praise the Lord, my brother, brothers and sisters, please. I don't want to say anything against my brother, Brother Marcusin. But I'm praying that Jesus Christ will bring him back to this chart, this faith, the foundation of Adventists. Amen? Amen. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 to 5. And again, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 to 5. This is famous quotation in Adventist. Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy raising. Lift up thine eyes round about, and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy sight. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thy heart shall fear and be enlarged. Because the abundance of sea shall be converted unto thee voice of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. What's the meaning of sea in the Bible prophecy? People, multitude, nation, and tongue, just like Revelation 17, verse 15 says. Everywhere around the world, they're going to be converted, even the Muslims. Amen. Amen. The Sabians or Arabians, they're going to be converted. So now let's continue. This is the foundation. This is the foundation of Seventh-day Adventists or the foundation of Adventists that is going to heaven. This is the foundation that if you want to be among 144,000, do you have to come to this foundation? We're not talking about false theory about Jehovah Witness 144,000. Do they keep 10 commandments? No. 
We're talking about spiritual Israel or Seventh-day Adventists, those we are on the foundation, those we keep Ten Commandments. Most of the churches, Sunday churches or Protestant or Babylon churches, they keep Nine Commandments. But unfortunately, I never see Nine Commandments in the Bible before. I always see Ten Commandments. So do not throw away the Sabbath and thinking that your son worship the honorable day of the son that Constantine changed the Sabbath, 321 AD, that was honored to be a son worship, the honorable day of the son will save you. That's a pagan son worship. This is coming from Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 1 and 2. Notice what Moses says. This is the foundation. We see how Isaiah, all the prophet, they all talk about the last days. Oh, you better come to the foundation of Adventists. Otherwise, you're not going to understand the Bible. Notice, Moses says, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 1 and 2. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the word of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speed shall tester as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. So Moses already had us to understand. He already told us that the latter rain, the last day, the latter rain that will come to God's people will begin just like sprinkling the little rain before the outpouring. It's going to come with the, I mean, without measure in the last days, which is Sunday law. But it's always come as a ladder, I mean, the little rain or shower. When we talk about September 11, 2001, just like Ellen G. White says in Revere Herald, 1906, Ellen G. White says that, you know, when the tall burden comes down, Revelation 18, verse 1 to 3 will be fulfilled, John chapter 20. When Jesus Christ breathed, when he was going to heaven or when he was ascended to heaven, first he breathed on his disciple and he said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. So the latter rain, or the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, according to history, is always come up as a sprinkle or little rain before the shower or plentiful shower to be given on the day of Pentecost. That's like Ellen G. White says. All the prophet talks about last days, the foundation of Adventists. Hosea chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he has turned and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Then shall ye know, if you follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning and he shall come unto you as the rain as the latter and former rain unto the earth. In Zephaniah chapter 8, verse 20 to 23. That says the Lord of hosts, It shall yet come to pass, that there shall come people, and the inhabitant of many cities, and the inhabitant of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to pray before the Lord, and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will go also. Yea, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. That says the Lord of hosts in those days, talking about Sunday, Lord, Lord, this is continuing. It shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold one of his language of nation, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jewish, talking about spiritual Jewish or Seventh-day Adventist, spiritual Israel, saying, will we go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Multitude, nation, tongue, and people, including Islam, the children of the East. That is on the, that day on the chart, the Islam. The first war, second war, and the third war right here, Islam. Even Islam in this last day, they're going to come to us. Because it's going to be based on two things. Whether you're going to receive the mark of the beast, that is sun, worship, or S-U-N dash day. Or S-U-N day. Sun day. Even the spirit will tell you that it's a sun worship day, so to speak. Or you're going to come to the foundation of Adventists. 
This is the foundation of the Bible. The whole Bible, all the prophets, they talk about this foundation. You better come to this foundation. If you call yourself Seventh-day Adventist, if not, there's only one thing left. You're going to receive the mark of the beast. Every book of the Bible. Do you all talk about last days? Do you all talk about Seventh-day Adventists? The foundation of Adventists in these last days. The glorious true. But unfortunately, many Seventh-day Adventists have been hypnotized. Hypnosis. But Jesuits. Not from the Seventh-day Adventists, but from Rome that they infiltrate our churches. <laughs> many of them have been hypnotized. But then... Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 19 to 20. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 19 to 20. Notice what the word of God says. Behold, at that time, talking about Sunday law, one more time, I'm going to read it. When it says at that time, it's talking about Sunday law. So let me read it one more time. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 19 to 20. Behold, at that time, I will undo all that afflict thee. And I will save her that hurt them, and gather her that was driven up, and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time, will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth, when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, says the Lord. The glorious truth, but unfortunate. Sleeping preachers are preachers to sleeping people. Or Laodicea, lazy people, they don't like to search the word of God. They're not on the foundation. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 14 and 15, notice. That says the Lord, the labor of Egypt and merchandise of Ethiopia and of the Sabians. Men of stature shall come over unto thee, and they shall be thine. They shall come after thee in chains. They shall come over, and they shall fall down unto thee. They shall make supplication unto thee, saying, Surely God is in thee, and there is none else. There is no God. Verily thou art a God, thou hidden thyself, O God of Israel that savior wow all the prophet amazing you see that's what the foundation of adventism is all about just like god gave ten commandments to little israel god has given us also the same ten commandment but more light he has given us the two tables Habakkuk two tables just like the ten commandment also is called two tables wow Jeremiah 30, verse 7 to 10. Notice what Jeremiah said. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day. Talking about Sunday law, we continue. Says the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke. Talking about papacy, the king of the north. That's a false king of the north. From off thy neck. Now I already explained it to you. I'm going to start one more time. So that you can understand without explanation. Amen. Jeremiah 30 verse 7 to 10. When we go through that time of trouble. Notice. Jeremiah says. Alas. For that day is great. So that none is like it. It's even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day says the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and I will bars that bound, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, says the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity, and Jacob shall return, and shall be in the in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. All the prophet talks about spiritual Israel or seven day Adventists in these last days. Joel chapter 3, verse 16 to 21. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and order his voice from Jerusalem. 
and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountain shall drop down new wine, and the hills shall flow with milk, and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters, and the fountain shall come forth of the house of the Lord, and shall water the valley of Shethem. Egypt shall be desolation, and Edom shall be a desolate witness for the voices against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah shall dwell forever, and Jerusalem from generation to generation. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, for the Lord dwells in Zion. Amen. Amen. God is going to cleanse our sinful blood in these last days. When he poured the ladder rain on us at the Sunday law, he's going to cleanse our spiritual blood. Do you think those we on the chart, the foundation of Adventists, do you think this is going to heaven? This is coming from Isaiah 45 verse 17. This is the last quote. This foundation is going to heaven. Notice. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed, nor confounded what without end. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you a question. What is what without end? What without end is heavenly Jerusalem without end. That heavenly Jerusalem will never end. So this is going to heaven? So if it's going to heaven, just like the word of God said, why you don't want to come to this? Why God's people are sleeping this last days? Why they like milk message? Why they like sleeping preachers that are in the conference churches and the conference schools that are giving spiritualism and hypnosis and hematizing God's people in these last days? The third Elijah is coming from Seventh-day Adventists who give God's warning just like when the Jezebel, when he called God's people to commit fornication in ancient Israel or the Old Testament. God always sent Elijah to rebuke and give a straight testimony to his people. Now you heard Elijah's message, the foundation of Adventists, warning and reprove his people. Jesus Christ's hand is leading the Adventist movement. He's the one who led Adventist mo movement, the made not cry, and he's the one who's leading this foundation. His hand is controlling this foundation with the early writers. Jesus Christ is leading his people to Jerusalem. Jesus Christ is the champion of truth. 